Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Very excited to be back here in Brooklyn at Van Alley. Met up with Dan and Geraldine. They're from Scotland. They just imported this motorhome. They're gonna travel all of North America. Today, they're gonna give us a tour inside and out. So join us. Cheers. Hi guys, my name's Dan. Hi, I'm Geraldine. And we're gonna give you a tour of our 2006 Mercedes Unimog U3000, which we've brought across from Scotland. Uh, it arrived in Newark just a week ago, so we're still kind of rooming into it a wee bit. But uh, thanks to one of Patrick's previous channels, we found Van Alley, which is just a perfect place to chill out for the moment and uh, acclimatise, I would say, and get over our jet lag. Um, so this, w this vehicle started its life in 2006 with the Red Cross. They kind of had it for humanitarian relief purposes, but there's not too much call for that in the southeast of England. So it sat around and didn't do much mileage for about 15 years. Uh, we picked it up uh, about 18 months ago and we ended up getting it professionally converted. Uh, so let me give you a bit of a run round. If I start at the front, we've got a good old American uh, 12,000 pound Ramsey winch. Um, hydraulic of course, hope I don't need to use that too much. Uh, under the hood is a four and a half litre turbo diesel engine. Um, it's restricted to about 55 miles an hour so it's, uh, it's not the fastest beast but it's got four wheel drive, it's switchable between four wheel and two wheel drive and it's got front center and rear diff locks so you probably if you get stuck you probably were doing something you really shouldn't have been doing um, yeah the tires the tires are huge I think they're about 36 inch uh, tires so I'm hoping we don't get a flat because certainly I can't physically lift one on my own so if we get a flat we carry a spare on the back which I'll show you uh, but if we get a flat it's going to be challenging to uh, to change Luckily, we bought what we would call in the UK a left hooker with the steering wheel on the left. Um, so whilst it was um, not the easiest to drive in the UK because we drive on the left, uh, we knew it was going to be right for when we came over here. We've been, uh, we've been kind of hoping to do this for a few years um, and then COVID delayed things and other things happened and, and everything came, came right in the end. So. Um, we bought it originally with the cab and the chassis and we've had the back professionally built on by a company in England called Motorcraft Adventure Developments. They'll definitely want me to mention them. But if you go on their website, they do some, some totally awesome vehicles. On the outside, we've got, uh, we've got the manual, uh, what do you call it over here, awning. Um, we've got a, an external gas hookup for the, for the barbecue. So the propane, uh, you can plug into the propane in there. Uh, or it's LPG as we call it in the UK. We've got these, these were the best ladders and they came from the States uh, from a company called Glow Step Revolution uh, and they just fold away into nothing. We found with steps, um, everything was a bit of a compromise with steps, but this seems to have been the best, the best result we could have come up with really. Uh, and while they were a bit stiff to start with, they're starting to loosen up a bit. Um, and luckily you can, uh, you can climb up at night with the steps away. The company put this uh, this aluminium sort of protection on the body um, the body would probably get quite damaged easily if we hit a tree or something like that so this really is some added protection as we've already found out when we caught the top corner on the l uh, a few nights ago um, so this is aluminium and this is welded on but the body is uh, it's it's ply on the outside with grp facing on it's then got two inches of uh, foam insulation in the middle and another ply lining on the inside, which you'll see in a bit with, with a GRP coating on as well. So with two inches of, uh, of insulation, we're hoping it, uh, it, it keeps its temperature sort of comfortable in the summer and warm in the winter as well. We've got, this is, this is just protection because we've got the, uh, what do you call it, the exhaust or the muffler behind there. And we've got the, uh, the brake master cylinders behind here. So they're just protection really. Uh, one thing it's got, uh, is, I don't know if you can see the, the, the hoses down here, it's got what's, what's called a central tyre inflation system. So from the cab you can press a button and inflate and deflate the tyres. So if you're going onto sand, onto the beach or something, you can, you can air down the tyres uh, just by pressing a button in the cab, which is quite neat, and then pump them up again uh, when you come off the sand back onto the road. Let me show you in the back here. Uh, we've got lockers on both sides. Um, 
this was just, uh, I'll show you the electrics in a minute, but in here we've managed to fit, uh, fit a washing machine. Um, it's only a half load, it's only a small one, but you know what, that's going to be invaluable. And we've just used it. When, when we left we were a bit tight for time, so we've kind of jammed everything in there a little bit. But we've got a, a 5000 watt uh, inverter here. We've got two 200 amp hour lithium ion batteries, it's all Victron Energy. Um, on the roof we've got 720 watts of solar and what we've been finding is that even when we've been using the oven at night because it's got a microwave as well and the battery goes down a bit by the time we've had our breakfast in the morning with the solar panel if it's a sunny day we're back up at 100 percent so that's proven proven really good uh, we've got a shore power hook up here um, that's probably different to the american connections because we're reliant on 240 volts anyway so i'm not expecting that we'll be able to plug in anywhere while we're over here um, if we need to, we'll, we'll, we'll work something out. The, the monstrous contraption on the back, that's all been built for, uh, for the spare tyre, really. Um, you don't want to put the spare tyre up on the roof because they're just so heavy, you can't get them down if you suddenly need to. Uh, and we've got two spare jerry cans there. It's, it's raised and lowered with the winch here, so that goes up to a pulley at the top of the frame, and as you let the winch out, so you, you, you unhook the locks here uh, and it basically lowers this down to ground level so that you can just roll the spare wheel off. Uh, we do have an extension for it which we didn't bring over so that you can put a, a couple of cycles or a, or a motorbike on the back but it was just becoming a bit too unwieldy and when you ship it across from Liverpool they charge you on the maximum length by the maximum height by the maximum width so it would probably have cost us a few hundred extra dollars just leaving that on the back. Um, at the top, the, 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 the bars on the top corners are really just protection sort of brush bars. Um, so in case if we hit any branches or anything, it'll help protect the, uh, the box. And the, the, dar, the, sort of the anthracite black colour uh, protection here, again, that's just aluminium corner plates which have been stuck on there really. Um, let me bring you around to the other side. The parking here, it's crazy man, but we'll get used to it. Okay, in this side, in the locker this side, again, we've got our tools jammed in and our ladder which we need to get up. Uh, in here we've got two removable propane tanks. I think they're both 26 litre, which would be about six gallons, something like that. Uh, and we've got a propane connector there so luckily we were able to fill up just 20 minutes from the port because we bought the the UK to US uh, propane adapter there so that worked well um, in the middle of here we've got the Aldi propane or electric heating system so that provides us with hot water and, uh, and space heating inside uh, there, there is an option where you can put in a heat exchanger um, and you can heat the water and the, and the back while you're traveling. It uses the coolant from the engine, but we didn't get that fitted in the end. Uh, we've got a fresh water refill point here. Uh, I think the fresh water tank is about 240 litres, so that's probably about 55, 60 gallons, something of that sort. Um, and we've got a bespoke made grey water or wastewater tank here. I think that's about 40 litre or about 10 gallon. Um, so it's enough to, to, you know, you're overnight. If you're somewhere where you don't want to open the tap, you're okay. Uh, and we've got 240, 250 litres of diesel. So that would be, again, 60 gallon, something like that, I would think, 55, 60 gallon. Uh, two standard uh, lead acid truck batteries. Um, and the, the window there, they call that the safari window. So it's, it's a window within a window. The glass one opens up separately and then if it's a nice day hey you can you can sit there you'll see from the inside but you can sit there and have your dinner chilling like with your arm out on the bar um, what you can see there that's the crawl through between the cab and the the living accommodation because the thing with thing with unimogs is they have uh, a, a, a torsion free chassis so the, uh, the the living accommodation is isolated from the cab and they'll twist independently and obviously if you fix one to the other as soon as you do that that you something will break so there's a there's a rubber uh, gasket uh, just connecting the two which keeps the water out 
Um, and on the top there, I can't remember what you guys call them, but we've got what we would call a roof rack or a platform. Um, so we can put some extra stuff up there. And I've got some badass American air horns I'm gonna put up there because you've gotta have big, big noise on a truck like this. This is the snorkel uh, for the air intake. Um, it's supposed to be able to go through four feet of water, uh, which on here, onto me would probably be about up to here, I would guess. Um, haven't tried it yet. Don't really want to put it through four feet of water, but if, if we end up in that situation, it's supposed to be good for it. Uh, and we've got some, some extra lighting up there. Um, they use these things a lot, the, the, these ones just either side. They position these here because a lot of the time in Europe, in Switzerland and in Austria, they put snow plows on the front of these things and use them in the winter for clearing the snow, uh, which is because, because the snow plows obviously cover up your standard headlights. So they put those up there, but we've got, we've got those and we've got the big light bar at the top. The thing with the Unimog says it's got portal axles. So the, the axle which goes between the front and the, the, the left and right wheels, unusually doesn't come in at the center of the wheel here. It actually comes in slightly higher, which means we've got, I think it's 18 inches of ground clearance uh, under the front and rear diffs. Um, it's probably got more than most, I would think, um, off-road vehicles. It's kind of known for that. Um, the, the types of companies that use these, that they used a lot in the rail industry back in Europe. Um, and the utility companies, back, certainly back in the UK, the electricity companies use them so that if the, if the overhead lines get blown down in the winter storms, they go up in the hills and, and on the fields with these, carry the spare poles on the back and drop them in. You know, they're the sort of, they're about the only vehicle that will get there to deal with that. Um, so that's the outside tour of our, of our Unimog. Oh, and we sprayed it, got it sprayed uh, Subaru Blue, which is the same blue as the Subaru Rally cars from the dare I say from the 80s it might be from the 90s but uh, so let's have a look inside and uh, you can meet Geraldine come on in guys right welcome to our home guys over to Geraldine okay so let me just tell you the rough layout so up here we've got our double bed and we've got some storage underneath it. Over here, we've got our uh, dining area. It all folds nicely together so that it makes a single bed, but also we can flip all the cushions around. They all fit perfectly so that we can then watch a movie against the back door, which is kind of cool. Um, we've got little poppy out bits. That means that we can extend our couch as well. So you can hang out in all kinds of different ways and great extra storage. We've got our wet floor shower area um, with our composting toilet, which I'm still coming to grips with. And that's, and we've got the galley kitchen. Um, so kitchen, let me tell you about my kitchen, it's so gorgeous. So I've got a sole gas hob, it's gas under glass. Uh, so getting used to that, just a two ring burner and it's got a hot plate as well. So uh, under here, We've got a sole gas cooker and, oh, is that sole gas, Dan? They're both sole gas. Yeah, the top yeah. hub's sole Which gas is a as Polish well. Polish company. And so this really clever cooker does steaming, microwaving, roasting, you name it. We have brilliant baked potatoes the other night out of it. So um, we've got a little drawer underneath which at the minute we're still getting used to where we put stuff but if you notice, look at the lovely catch. So the, the hardware on this is just beautiful. Yeah, the slam locks, they're just gorgeous. And then we've got this beautiful laminated floor, as well as my little extra bit of workspace. We've got our lighting arrangements. So we've got all kinds of lights going on here. Let me turn them all off and then I can show you. So we've got an outside light, of course. Then we've got some lovely clean white light for doing the cooking and all of that kind of stuff. Then we've got our nice warm lights for when we're getting atmospheric in the evenings. Uh, we've got, I'll just show you these wee lights at the same time. So we've got these beautiful little pop lights and um, I don't know if you can get in to see that or not Patrick, but when I, when I um, operate it, it's got a little touch button so I can just have a little tiny dimmer switch or I can put it on 
more and get a spotlight for reading. So we've got one on either side, which is really handy, which now that we're here brings me nicely up to the storage lockers. So, okay, mine's is messy. I'll not show you Dan's. Let's pretend that his is absolutely perfectly tidy and I'm the only messy one of the two of us. But we've got these all around the edge and at the back, just back from the laundrette. In the back, we've got more storage here for our clothes. In fact, we've got loads of storage under the bed as well. That's the garage underneath there with the washing machine and the gas tanks and everything which are accessed from the outside locker. Yeah, which is why it's so high up. Now under here, we're just waiting on our, um, blind. On our blind coming, but we've got an, a wee makeshift happening. Um, but we've got a lovely big sky hatch here. So, and you can stand on the bed and poke your, from, from your stomach upwards, you can actually stand up there yeah. uh, through the sky hatch, which is kind of quite nice at night. I must just say, look at the steps. Are they not beautifully made? You know, just, just lovely, really nice. Okay, so up here we've got all of our storage. This is a dummy front because we've got our extractor fan. So absolutely beautiful action. Slide straight back in again. We've gone for a particularly large sink. Um, we had been suggested to get a smaller one, but I cook a lot. We do a lot of DIY. We do have a lovely little piece of this wood that can just patch on top of it. And so that's a chopping board as well. Oh my God, the tap. Yep. Woo. So I washed my hair at the sink the other day, which was just so handy. Although I don't have to wash myself in the sink. Dan, these are aluminium, aren't they? Al aluminium? Uh, no, they're, they're black plastic surround. Oh. But the, 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 the bit that you put your fingers in to pull down, that's aluminium. And there's the there's blackout blind if you pull it down and insect blind if you pull it up. Do you want right. to that straight? Absolutely. Blackout blind. I could have done it at the same time. Mozzie net. I quite like these because these are motorcraft catches and look, you can either fully close them or you can put them just so that they're open a wee bit, but the wind's not going to catch them. So, or you can leave it open, whatever. whatever and they floats machine your boat. the handles themselves with their logo and the reunion jack on. There's quite a, there's, there's a real attention to detail they've given it. It's quite nice, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, they really care about what they do, yeah. don't they? So again, just some more storage. We're getting used to where we put stuff. We need to have some boxes to get things organized a little bit better, but early days. We've got a wee extra drawer here, which is going to be a handy one. And again, lovely action and all of it. We're really, really pleased with how it's being made. You know, we're just made up. So shall I show you in the bathroom? Okay, come follow me. Right. So in here, again, we've got a wee bit of storage going on. We've got a composting toilet. Uh, will your people be familiar with the composting toilets? Yeah, so you, yeah. Okay, I don't need to show you how that works. <laughs> Probably just as well. So then we've got our sink and again, we've got a hose. So we've got a wee extender hose as well. So we can just stand up here and have a shower. Um, so just whatever way we want to do it. Um, got our windows, got our storage, got a lovely big mirror and we've got our um, we've got a crawl through hatch here um, just thought it might be um, just sensible when we had the opportunity to be able to have the option of being able to get straight on in to the cab so as long as this, the front seats are down then we could just crawl straight on through instead of getting out of the truck and, and um, having to go in that way. Now what it didn't tell you was that my lovely door goes both ways. So this way you can see the radiator. So it's all Dan, over to you, wet, central yeah, that's, heating. That's, that's connected on the same circuit as the radiators. So there's a radiator uh, beneath the table here, uh, which is connected to the wall. And there's one that you can't quite see, I think just at the back of the bed there. So it, it, we haven't found out yet, but I believe it should warm up pretty quickly when you're in a, when you're in a cold climate. 
So just before we leave the bathroom, um, we've got a lovely, you can see all the work here. So there's a lip on it so that the water's not going to be going out the door. And we've got something nice to come comfortably stand on. Dan, have you already talked about the hot water? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Talked about the Aldi system that's that's away under the garage, which works on propane or on electric sh shore hookup. And you know, we had the we had it on for half an hour, was it? Half and then an we hour. Were you've, able got to... a, you've got a good tank of hot water. Which yeah. segues me beautifully onto the magic. Want to talk about fridge freezer first? No? Mm. Okay. I want to do this. This is okay. cute. So we've got a water pump. It's on at the minute. Oh, I've obviously left it on again. So we try and turn it off because we did have a bit of a mishap one time whenever we were in Big Blue, which was our previous van. Um, Dan, can I tell? Sure. Will I do the pressing and you can do the talking? I'm sure you. Well, this is the this is the Aldi heating system, which I know you have over here. Um, and that from that you control basically you control the hot water and the. Uh, and the heat in the cabin it's pretty simple to use um no issues with it yet but we've only been in the truck for a week uh, and this i'm sure you'll recognize this is the victron control system so it tells you how much water how much fresh water you've got how much water you've got in your waste tank how much ac power you're taking from the inverter what the state of your batteries is we're at 99 percent at the minute we're charging 71 we're getting 74 watts from the solar panels and we're drawing 168 watts from the inverter um, and it's linked to the there's a router up here and if i can get that working on the us cell phone network we'll be able to monitor it from wherever we are in the world if we're not with the truck we'll be able to see what the batteries are doing and switch things on and off you can also link they're so these things are so clever you can even link alarms into that so that if there's any movement in the truck or anything It'll alert you through your phone wherever you are in the world. Now, which one of them is connected to Motocraft in case That's we the need Victron. help? Yeah, so Motocraft have got to log in to the Victron system so that if we get any technical problems, they can log in from the UK and troubleshoot, troubleshoot it from there, which is pretty cool. So that's yeah. one of the things that's really nice because, you know, it's the after service. You yeah. know, it's not just, oh, do the build. It's you know, it's nice. It's really nice. OK, let me show the fridge freezer. OK, this is bigger than the one at my house. OK, it's not fully packed yet, but you can see loads of space, loads of room in it. And the only thing I'm going to do with it. Oh, we are in Brooklyn. Let's prove it. Um, so yeah, so we'll probably put wee ledges on here just to make sure. We haven't had any problem with things moving. It all feels pretty, and we might even just put some, um, you know, the anti-slip stuff on it. Um, but yeah, lots of space there. And then lots of storage up here for, God, we've even got our toaster. And yeah, so and because- your milk frother. My for milk coffee. frother for my coffees in the morning. Because we can't buy any of this stuff over here because it's on a different voltage, of course. So did you mention voltage? Yeah. yeah. Cool. And then we've got a wee tall cupboard in here and there's the handle for the awning. So it's just nice and handy. So we'll probably get some wee drop boxes to come down there and maximize the storage in here a little bit better. Dyson vacuum cleaner in there. Did you say that Madeline is doing her internship no. at, <laughs> no, at Dyson? Okay, so beautiful ceilings. Dan, talk us through yeah, the Yeah, the interior finishing is all um, the, the, the inside GRP of the white composite panels. And they've, um, they've put the, these strips along where the joins and the panel on the interior of the panels are to hide the sort of join which I think all works very neatly. And I must say one thing uh, Motocraft have done particularly well is the finish. All the, um, all, all the units, it's all cut on a CNC machine. So if you, if you look at the detail of the hinges and the way everything fits together, it's, it's for me, it's, I know you don't use millimetres, but it's millimetre perfect. It's just such attention to detail. The gap around all the, all the doors is the same. The hinges there, they all flush. Um, it's just it just you just couldn't get that level of detail by hand. It'd be nice if you could, but uh, it's... Do you know what I've just realised? I never mentioned the fan. Oh yeah, there's a fan, isn't there? Yeah. And it's a silent fan. Do you remember where the switch is? Here, middle switch, isn't it? Try no, it. It's... I think it's the far one. 
far one, is it? Yeah. Yeah. We'll come back to it because it takes a bit of time. But it does open but up. But it opens up. We've got one of them in our kitchen. They're brilliant. Hear how quiet that is? Isn't that lovely? So it just gradually separates open. One thing we don't have, or two things we don't have, uh, and it, it, we, we prove, we will be proven right or wrong not having them. One is a generator. We haven't got a generator on here at all. Um, and consequently, we don't have any air conditioning. So we don't know how it'll go. So I went into up. that lovely little shop the other day. And because they've put all these USB ports all over the place, <laughs> we've got our own Irish looking air con, which works a treat. So when you're cooking, there we go, my number one fan. <laughs> so it's just hanging out up here at the moment. So what else? We've got some cupboards here. So again, useful storage. And the same on the other side that Dan has. And we'll just move these on over. And this, uh, Oops, it is. this is the what's called a safari hatch. Uh, which is just a cool extra they do. It's a little bit tight still because it's new, but this just closes right up and locks in place. Uh, and there's a window in a window, so if you don't want the, the full experience, you can just open that one up. So I've got a bit more storage to show you. So underneath here, I just move this along. And here's a whole load of make and do. In fact, there's room for a little sewing machine in there, Dan. I promise there is room <laughs> for a sewing machine in there. And the same is underneath Dan's. And did I show you this already? I think I did. So we've got more storage here. And then these wee boys just flip down. Oh, yeah. Yep. Ta da! Lovely. So, and then we've got our lovely chessboard table. And this, whenever we don't want to be using it, pops up. And, then that's... and we've got a little ledge here, beautiful, again, everything feels so smooth, it's lovely. A little ledge, this pops down onto the ledge, and we just wiggle these round, and there we've got our bed. So... And even all the sockets, they've put sockets in that have all got USB connectors in. Uh, and that one's, I've only just realised this, I didn't even realise it before, that one's even got your standard USB and a USB-C socket in as well. It's just that that level of detail that they've gone What's to. What's a USB-C socket that's for? for the, the, that's the new iPad Pro connection. Ah, cool. Okay, will we go back down? Yep. It really is so easy just to put things together, isn't it? Yeah. Let's see if I can make it easy. That's it. Sound as a pound. Right, and now it's open. So this is the icon, what's it called again, this fan? Um, Airflow icon, yeah. but it's a, delay, it's a delay shutter. And what's actually really nice, because Dan was saying about us not having the air con, see if we have this window open at the back here, and then we have the skylight open or the back window, it gives a lovely wee bit of through flow. So, you know, even though we don't have all the fans, so I'll just knock that off. You know, if the bathroom door was closed, she wouldn't even hear that. But it, it's so cute the way it just opens and closes. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing, seeing our, our van that we feel really proud of, our truck. Um, let me tell you a bit about how we've ended up here. Um, it's something we wanted to do for a few years. We always knew that we wanted to go and go and see more of the world when we got a chance and before we got to the age where it might become difficult. Um, so we'd we, we'd we'd had we'd, we'd worked through a number of vehicles, a couple of Land Rovers, uh, until we discovered Unimog. A couple of Unimogs. A couple of Unimogs. <laughs> yeah, this is our, this is actually our third Unimog before we've we've decided this was the right one. Um, and we've and got three wonderful children, yeah. and one of them's off the books, got his degree and got his job, and the other two beautiful girls are at university, and we just thought, well, if they're going off having their new experiences now. You know we need to start preparing for for when we get to do ours and then in, bum, bum, in, bum. In, in the midst of covid uh like a bolt out of the blue i got diagnosed with prostate cancer uh no symptoms it was purely picked up by chance uh and extremely fortunately for me uh they were able to operate and i got the all clear so any of you guys who are watching this please 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 Dan had no yeah what age 50 plus 
well no you had somebody at work younger so there was no signs Dan has never been off sick he is annoyingly well all the time and it's just a really quick little test a wee PSA test just to check out so maybe that's why you're watching this today that's one of you think you're watching it about the truck but actually it's to get this message so anyhow back to Dan and his cancer so yeah uh, early 2021 uh, I got told I got prostate cancer a few months later I was in having surgery uh, luckily they got it all and I'm out so I've now got the all clear uh, but one of the real one of the real benefit that came out of it was that I had an insurance policy that paid out for uh, for cancer diagnosis so what that meant was that instead of building our own truck which could, would have been really pretty yeah, scabby <laughs> it wouldn't be it wouldn't be quite as tour worthy uh, and we probably wouldn't be here now because I'd still be building it uh, it meant we were able to use the money for that on getting somebody else to build this truck for us um, so our plan now now we're over here yes yeah, so we're in New York at the minute. We've been here for what? About a, about a, with the truck, about a week. Yeah, about a week with the truck. We're going to stay a few more days here and then we're going to amble our way to Chicago and then over towards Montana. Montana and then up through Calgary and through the Rockies, up to Alaska. To Fairbanks, yeah. hopefully. And then back down Vancouver and then the Oregon coastline and yeah. then down through California. And I've been learning Spanish on Duolingo, so we hope to then go south of the border and travel all the way down to Patagonia. Yeah. But like, <laughs> we're only a weekend. Who knows what's going on? We're only happen. a weekend, so it's <laughs> it's really early days. It's still, it still it doesn't really feel like it's... It's getting more real, um, meeting people over here. Uh, oh my God, people have been so lovely. Yeah. The other morning we had the fire brigade down here because not because I burnt the bacon like Dan said on Facebook, although that could easily have been the reason. But there was a new guy, Kevin, who's learning um, the ropes and so they were doing some training. And big shout out to Luke and Jean and Captain Badass and, and Kevin because we said to them we want to put stickers from all the different places we've been and especially ones that are meaningful you know and they like oh come up to the firehouse and they've given us a sticker and you know it's going to be like one of the first that goes on the truck so they do such a great job so big shout out to them yeah totally yeah yeah the but people, people have been all so friendly haven't they the people have been absolutely great yeah loved it so shipping the truck across um it took about 10 days on the boat from Liverpool. Uh, I had to drop it off at the docks several days before it shipped. Uh, and then you've got another couple of three days at this end before it to go through customs. So I, it was actually from saying goodbye to the truck to picking it up again was about three weeks, which was quite nerve wracking when it felt like a whole life was invested in it. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's some stories out there about when you ship it in different parts of the world, it doesn't always end up coming off the boat in the same condition that it's gone in on. Uh, but we've been really lucky. Um, it came out, came off without a scratch. Everything was still in it. Um, so big shout out to the shipping company who may get to see this, which was IVSS. Um, they ship things all around the world, ship trucks for people all around the world. Um, so yeah, we were, we were. Somebody pulled up one day in a car, and they were just walking past, and then they doubled back, and they handed me this flyer, and they says, "Oh, I think I'm a friend of Patrick's. I think I think he might be interested in your truck." Um, and one thing we found that wherever we've gone. Everybody's just been like wanting to come up and go, I love your truck guys, tell me a bit more about <laughs> it. Everybody's been so friendly, it's been so friendly. But, and then it was you Patrick, because we'd seen your video. In fact, tell the story. That's the reason, that's exactly why we're here. So it was, I think it was about five, six months ago, uh, Patrick did a video on van life here and did a tour of a couple of vans that were parked in the street. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I watched it and I thought, what a fantastic place to stay with the Manhattan skyline in the background and other van lifers there. And not just that, but uh, we got engaged <laughs> when we were staying oh, in Brooklyn, Brooklyn yeah, with our friends Catherine yeah. and Jonathan. Um, so Brooklyn's always been kind of important to us. So they handed me a leaflet of Patrick's and they said, yeah, I think you might be interested. So I messaged him and within about two minutes, he texted back and went, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so it's, it's entirely thanks to Patrick and his video here that we were able to track it down using two or three landmarks and triangulate it and work it out with Google Street View where this actually was 
um, and it's just been, it's been a great spot, hasn't it? It's been lovely, yeah. You know, see the, well, we flipped round because there was the road cleaning potentially the other day, but see going to bed at night and out through that there window when it was flipped the other way around, <laughs> seeing the Empire State Building, the Chrysler Building. <laughs> it's just like, oh my God, is this really our life? And we came, I came over with the perception that maybe not New Yorkers were a little bit offhandish, like uh, like the people in London can be sometimes. Um, uh, but that's not what we found. We've just found the people here so welcoming and and fun. Happy just to help. fun. They don't mind if I practice my New York accent. Close the door. Yeah, yeah. I think it's. I think the truck Dolly uh, is the one that's making the friends, and we're kind of just piggybacking on that. Yes. You know. So everybody just warms to the truck and then they'll they'll take us along with it. Um, can I mention, am I okay to mention that we we're, we're, our website is in sort of early stages of development, but we're gonna put our story on there and put pictures on there. So that is called dollysdiary.uk. Um, and when we get a bit more confident and a bit more prof proficient at it, we might put the odd video up on YouTube uh, and we're posting Facebooks like the fire with the firemen here, Geraldine having four firemen uh, listening to her every word. Uh, we're going to put those. We put those up on uh, Facebook and that as well. Excellent tour, guys. You're going to have an amazing time here in North America. And uh, welcome to Brooklyn. Thank welcome you. to Van Alley. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love it. Thanks, we'll see guys. You soon. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.